Good evening. This is Left, Right and Centre. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Tonight, the Election Commission has said it can hold simultaneous Lok Sabha and Assembly elections next year. But the question is whether that will work and whether it is even desirable in a democracy like India. We'll talk about the pros and cons in just a minute. And also tonight, from election hacking like in the United States to cyber attacks that have brought governments to their knees, has the internet become more of a threat today? We'll be joined, among others, by the former Prime Minister of Sweden, Karl Bildt. That's coming up in about 30 minutes. But first tonight, the Election Commission of India says it's ready to hold simultaneous state polls and Lok Sabha elections from next year, something Prime Minister Modi and the BJP have been pushing for for some time. However, other political parties are sceptical. Those in favour of holding polls at the same time say it'll save money, it'll cause fewer disruptions. But others argue that the logistics are an issue and so is the politics, since regional parties in particular could take a hit. Will Indians vote for 30 state assemblies and 543 Lok Sabha MPs simultaneously next year? One nation, one poll. An idea that's been backed strongly by Prime Minister Modi and former President Pranab Mukherjee. The simultaneous election next year or is it just an idea? I don't know. It's a thought which your government has been pushing forward. If we do believe that there should be simultaneous elections, but it'll ultimately have to be done in consensus with all political parties and in a manner that is transparent and known to the people. देश को focus की जरूरत है। प्रधानमंत्री इस देश के leader हैं। उनको इस बात को accept कर लेना चाहिए और panic नहीं करना चाहिए। Seventeen states are lined up to go to the polls between 2018 and 2019, and with Lok Sabha elections due in 2019, will one big election instead of many small ones be better? But apart from the logistics, what about the politics? According to a study of voter behavior by the IDFC, in the 16 cases on simultaneous elections between 1999 and 2014, in 77% of these constituencies, the winner came from the same party. The trend of choosing the same party has gone up from 68% in 1999 to 86% in 2014. It is not in the interests of democracy and therefore we oppose it. Prior to 1967, there used to be simultaneous polls. But will it happen in future? Major opposition parties are against this. And interestingly, it needs a lot of constitutional amendments which requires two-thirds majority. So without the opposition, it can't be done. So will the simultaneous polls be just a proposal or will it become a reality is a big question mark. In New Delhi with Sunil Prabhu and Sunetra Chaudhary, this is Arunachalam Vaidyanathan, NDTV. So what are the pros and cons? Well, we've seen where their story that has talked about that, but we need to delve more into this. The former Chief Election Commissioner of India, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, is here in the studio with us. Prashant Bhushan, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court and founder member of Swaraj Abhiyan, joins us tonight. Ajoy Kumar, spokesperson of the Congress Party, Ajaz Ilmi, member of the BJP, and senior journalist Sagrika Ghosh, here with us in the studio. Dr. Qureshi, you had actually written about the issue of simultaneous elections last year. And you said the idea is good in principle, but seems fraught with constitutional issues and administrative problems. Why? Yes. You know, the, why I say it is desirable? My uh, the nuanced answer was it's very desirable, but not feasible for, for a legal and technical reason. Why desirable? Prime Minister had given two reasons. One, that there is a lot of expenditure. And secondly, there is a lot of disruption of normal life for uh, two to three months and even longer. In fact, uh, I would like to add two more things which go in favor of simultaneous election. That uh, I've often said that election has become the mother of all corruption, it's the root cause of all corruption. If we are in the election mode all the time, we are in the corruption mode all the time. And the fourthly and the most dangerous, communalism, casteism, de divisive politics, all that hate politics happens close to the election. After that, they all forget about it. So we are in that mode all the time. Let there be peace for four and a half years if there is simultaneous election. So these are the arguments for. But there are equally strong arguments against it. For instance, the local issues, national issues are different. People love elections. Now, uh, to say that people don't like elections, actually people love elections. Otherwise, after winning an election, an MP and MLA doesn't show his face to his constituent for five years. At least they have to keep going back to him, begging for vote. People love it. Recently, in one student uh, parliament in uh, Pune, I came across a very nice slogan. 
जब जब चुनाव आता है गरीब के पेट में पुलाव आता है नाउ थर्टी थाउजेंड करोड़ विच वॉज स्पेंड इन द जनरल इलेक्शन वॉज स्पेंड ऑन द पीपल जॉब वर क्रिएटेड सो एक्चुअली द ओनली इलेक्शन कमीशन इज द ओनली पार्टी विच हैज टू बी इन द फील्ड ऑल द टाइम एंड इफ यू सीन द लेटेस्ट फिल्म न्यूटन you will realize how difficult it is to conduct election so you say we will be relieved all the, of all that no but as you said and this is important that people often vote very differently uh, in states and and they vote very differently when it comes to to lok sabha elec- elections and therefore you're suggesting that this this therefore could come under a question mark if you have them together that people may actually end up voting for the same party that they do at the center as well as the state and actually studies have shown that that has happened before yeah quite possible yeah quite possible but the the how do you come to the conclusion that it, this favors uh, one party or the other suppose people we uh, vote for the same party with their voting for the center uh, but maybe that party is uh, not not the one which uh, is actually trying to uh, do this reform so uh, even if uh, people vote for the same party it's not necessary that the is the, the party which you and i have in mind they may be uh, it may be working the other way also but let let me ask uh, prashant bhushan what the constitutional issues are mr bhushan uh, do you also agree with dr qureshi that it may be you know a, a good idea but is not feasible and he raised the question of of the problems he sees but constitutionally what would it take to actually do something like this now to my mind uh, this is a totally absurd proposition i don't know uh, i can understand the motive of those who are suggesting it i can understand the motive of uh, mr modi and the bjp they feel that at the center uh, he is perceived to be the strongest leader and therefore he is likely to have an advantage at the center and that advantage would be carried over to the bjp in the states if elections in the states are held simultaneously but you see you have to understand that elections are held when a state assembly is dissolved because the government falls during the middle of its term and in, that is why in different states elections are held at different times because uh, different states the governments keep falling uh, due to various reasons at different times now how do you ensure uh, either you say that if a if a government falls in mid term and a fresh election is held then that election and then the new government will be valid only for the remainder of the term which means for the next 6 months or one year etc or you say that if a government falls thereafter there will be only president's rule for the remainder part of the term and that elections would only be held at the end of 5 years that would that would create such severe problems i mean i am surprised that people are not mentioning these issues and th- while they are talking about simultaneous polls etc i mean it's a totally absurd proposition it makes a complete mockery of our present uh, system of uh, federal constitution where state elections are held separately the state government is considered to be separate where the uh, after uh, the government falls due to uh, lack of confidence etc and fresh elections are called for that new government stays on for the next 5 years that's I, like a fresh yeah, election and i think i think you've actually you know you've raised the crux of the issue and so let me take that to ajaz ilmi how would this work i mean you've heard uh, prashant bhushan calling it an absurd proposition a, a mockery of the present system but if you hear the practical difficulties how would it work given the system we are in and we're in, in changing our entire electoral system well uh, i know some people are resist change but uh, the only ch- uh, constant thing is change itself in a democracy we have to understand we started off as independent india by holding simultaneous elections so what we started off was was a good thing over the course of years when dismissing governments became a fine art uh, or the wind wind fancies of central government largely by the congress then this problem of the elections happening at different times multiplied manifold it, it, is, it, is, it is it is it is primarily it is very important to understand what uh, mr kureshi just spoke about there is an issue it's desirable we've been wanting it and it's not only because prime minister modi wants it from 1999 the law commission asked for us uh, gave a recommendation a, a congress committee led by mr N- nachipian a congress member of parliament uh, of parliamentary panel they also accepted and gave various suggestions it's, it's it is de- desirable so why not discuss and debate it and have views 
Mr. Prashant Bhushan has his own views, but I'm sure members of parliament, if we discuss it in a sane manner without disrupting each other, we can come to a solution where we can minimize and we can actually reduce costs and make it make it better. Democracy can evolve. It doesn't have to, change can't be, uh, you can't stop change by saying that uh, it's going to create havoc. But Ajaz, let me just read out to you the parliamentary standing committee that has yes. been looking at this issue. They, they prepared a report in 2015. They you know, discuss the advantages and disadvantages, the challenges that they've talked about, and there are many. A, that the proposal could be politically motivated. Hmm. B, it could possibly marginalize regional parties. I think that is a big concern. Uh, that it's not realistic to implement. Uh, that voting once every five years could deplete political accountability, and voters may not differentiate between state assembly and the Lok Sabha. These are some of the key issues that can, they have flagged. How would you address some can of I these? This? Yeah. I think the Indian polity, Indian voters are very, very savvy. We've seen 2014, where the NDA won an overwhelming mandate, but in Orissa, you had a very different mandate because the state assembly elections were held, and it's been going on for a long, long time. People know how to differentiate when they want a leader at the center of a particular party and a chief minister of a particular party, they make their own choice. It's like saying that the Indian polity, Indian voters have no civic sense or political sense or democratic sense of democracy. There is a I report, that, that there is, is that a report that, that was released with. last year that has actually documented that there were 16 simultaneous elections between 1999 and 2014. In 77% of these constituencies, the winner came from the same party. So actually that contradicts what you're saying. It shows that there is a trend. Uh, there is a trend. We have that graphic on, on the IDFC Institute report of 2016. There are only four assembly elections which happened with 2014. 77% voted for the uh, same no, party. We're talking about simultaneous polls. Simultaneous polls. It's yeah. It doesn't happen with Lok Sabha elections. Only four states: Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Sikkim, so Arunachal. These are the only this, states this that This is vote. basic data so, from those states. But I agree with you. But but the, the contrary data is where elections were held in 14. You had the BJD sweeping once again the state of Orissa, despite a national wave in the favor of uh, B, the BJD. Well, that's also true. So let me take that to Ajoy Kumar. Ajoy. Do you think that this is something that can at least be debated? Uh, we didn't really get a clear answer from Rahul Gandhi on where he stood on this because he believes that the Prime Minister is trying to deflect from other issues. But do you believe the time has at least come for a healthy debate on this? I'm Just to again look at statistics, the Lok Sabha election in 2009 cost 1115 crores, then it cost 3800 crores, and if the polls are held together, the total cost will be 4500 crores uh, approximately. So, look at the kind of money, actually, we would be saving if elections were held at the same time. Ajoy. So, Nidhi, uh, first, up, first things first, 4,500 crores uh, for, the, for the country is a very small amount of money. And, you know, they, you, can, and you can never look at the cost of uh, democracy. So... The other issue is that uh, Mr. Qureshi uh, said that it was, dis uh, it is neither, it, uh, uh, Nidhi, there's a lot of echo, so I'm just going to remove my ear. Yeah. So uh, the other issue is that uh, Mr. Qureshi said neither is it is, is desirable but not feasible. It is not only not desirable, it is not even feasible. And the third issue is that this government, which is not a sarkar, I keep, we keep saying it's a circus because you had demonetization. Now you'll have a debate on this and it will divert all the attention. The issues are very clear. Well, the you, debate is the, happening because the, the election commission said it's ready. Not because the government it's said anything. It's a democratically elected government calling it a circus is demeaning the polity who vote vote democratically. Can I come? Yes. Hey, Ajaz, Ajaz, yes. I'll just complete. Yes. Ajaz, can I come? Uh, can, can I complete my? Uh, can I complete? Please yeah. Do. Okay. Yeah. See, the the Mr. Qureshi, Mr. Qureshi was saying that you know there's a, a corruption will come less, communalism will come less, etc., etc. My question is then you would, why don't you stop elections? I mean that's uh, totally a illogical. Uh, I the election commission did a good job in banning Mr. Koda in my home state of Jharkhand. So it's a poor implementation of law. You don't implement law properly to prevent communalism and casteism. So the election process cannot be long. The most important part is you need you need. The, the, uh, uh, due to the anti-defection bill, the people defecting between parties have reduced to a significant extent. The government of any state following is much, much lesser. So let the state, and the state issues are very different. And you correctly said that when the, six months after this 2014 elections, the results started, uh, uh, results started coming differently. It is very important for a country so like India assume? to okay, hold the politicians uh, uh, Ajay, one second. Uh, is it, uh, is know, it as much as honest. No, no. So, so let me just ask, uh, let me ask Sagrika that first. Is it wrong for us to assume that people will necessarily vote 
the, for the same party uh, if if the elections are held together i did read out one study that generally does show that trend uh, but do you think that that would necessarily be, be the case going forward well you know Nidhi, i think to